Hey gamers, it's Grind This Game here, back with Satisfactory. And we're on the experimental branch here, and the nuclear technology update came out, I think, four days ago now, maybe five days by the time this video gets out. I kind of missed it. Um, I should have been checking more closely, but uh, in order to unlock these two new tiers, we need a thousand motors, a thousand computers, and a thousand heavy modular frames. And I had uh, all the motors stored up and the heavy modular frames stored up. I didn't have all the computers stored up because I had, I thought I was going to need supercomputers. So I kind of diverted computers going to supercomputer production. Going to wait a little while and then store them up. So here I've got kind of everything. I'm loading it in. And we'll skip ahead here because it's just me loading stuff into the elevator. So here we go. We got everything kind of ready to go. Unlocking tier 7 and 8, which is basically the nuclear stuff and the aluminum production stuff. I, I always like this animation. I always like to watch it launching the uh, space elevator. It's pretty awesome. There she goes. I don't know if it's going to Earth or if it's going to, like, just some kind of space station. I don't know. But anyway, let's go see what that unlocked really in detail here. So what do we got here? Lots of stuff. So it looks like we're able to build the reactor now. Assuming we have the right stuff. Uh, we need, there's control rods, there's uh, the ability to scan for uranium now, which is good. Uh, a hazmat suit. It's filters for the hazmat suit. Uh, scanning for catarium. Yeah, and scanning for uranium. So we'll have to collect up all that kind of stuff to unlock that. And I think I read that the hazmat suit requires some aluminum technology so we might have to unlock the bear stuff first before we can build a hazmat suit in order to make the aluminum stuff that we need so i had to wait a while to get some computers made but got them made now uh, i did that off camera just to save you guys the time here we go we're gonna Unlock nuclear technology. With the provided buildings and parts, you can now set up nuclear power generation, which balances an increase of fuel production complexity with improved power output. Protective measures against radiation have been included. Note, this method of power generation creates nuclear waste. I love watching that thing take off. Bear process. Lots of stuff in here. Ooh, Mark V belt. Nice and fast. Fast lifts. Gotta try those out. And some other stuff which I don't think, well there's a lot of art missing here and I don't think a lot of this stuff is used yet. But I'll save the my aluminum kind of production setup for the next video. I have footage for it. Uh, I didn't want to cram it into this video because this video is going to try to be getting close to getting nuclear stuff done. It's a long, long process because we got to find it. We got to set up all the infrastructure for it. Okay, after a lot more uh, running around trying to get parts, I'm gonna, I just want to try to build this thing. See what it's like. Take a look at it. We're probably not going to actually build it here because I think the uranium's uh, radioactive and I don't want that in my base. So I'll probably do the nuclear power somewhere else. But I just wanted to see this thing. It is huge. I thought the fuel generators were big, but this thing is massive. Looks pretty damn awesome. Okay, so nuclear waste comes out. Nuclear fuel goes in. Oh, it looks like it has like a viewing platform. 
Let's take a look inside here. Ooh. <laughs> Looks pretty awesome. You can't jump inside. I guess that's good. Otherwise, you'd probably melt. But, looks pretty awesome. Can't wait to get this thing running. But we gotta get a hazmat suit. We gotta get hazmat filters. We gotta scan for the uranium. We gotta find out, head out, and find it. So I jumped ahead again. I went and collected some more parts in order to get this uh, bear process stuff unlocked. Milestone reached. A new generation of parts and building upgrades is now available, most of which are aluminum based. Now I needed to unlock this stuff in order to build the aluminum stuff that I need for the hazmat suit. And I do have some bauxite kicking around from uh, previous playthroughs where I found some. So we'll be using that. Hopefully I don't have to actually set up the whole mining infrastructure and go out and find bauxite ore, but... So let's take a look and see what we need for that hazmat suit, hazmat filter. after I scan for some stuff here. Okay, what do we got? There's the filter. Yeah, so we're gonna need to do some aluminum stuff here in order to build the hazmat suit. Like I said, hopefully I don't have to go out and get box. I think I have it in some storage containers here. Yeah, it's pretty far away. I'll do that in the next video. Uh, set up all the production. Bring conveyor belts out from there and power out to there so I can actually mine the stuff. I think we have enough bauxite sitting around here in containers that I can use. Yeah, we might have to manually craft some stuff, but that's okay. So here we go. Let's see. Okay, first we need, we're gonna need silica, which comes from uh, the. <laughs> oh, I already had some. I already, I already had some made, but it comes from the quartz crystals. We'll get some aluminum ingots made first. So now we're gonna make some alkaline aluminum sheets, which are required for the hazmat suit. We should have enough now to do the hazmat suit. Yep, okay, good. Now, we only need one of these. I think they last forever. So once you make one, you're good. It's just the filters that get uh, used up, so we'll have to do the filters next here. Now for the filters, uh, we're just missing some rubber here. Grab some rubber, and the, the hazmat filters use regular filters, and regular filters use mycelium, which comes from like uh, mushrooms and mushroom-looking trees and some uh, some coral looking stuff you can chop down and you get uh, mycelium. So I end up making about 50 of these and hopefully that'll that'll be enough. Time to scan for that uh, uranium and get out there and try to find it now that we got our hazmat suit and filters. And I think it's pretty far far out there. 
Luckily I have a few kind of highways built out of conveyor belts, so it'll be a bit quicker to get there than normal. And I like kind of using elevated platforms, I don't like uh, necessarily driving around in the bottom because you can just like on paths and stuff. So I build these kind of high skyways, skyways, whatever. Basically conveyor belts. Later on we're going to get trains, I think, so that'll probably replace all this. But it's kind of fun. It's like a little scenic tour of <laughs> of the map as you go around here. It's kind of annoying how when you scan for stuff, uh, you have to rescan pretty often. Now I had disconnected my little skyway here. I think because I was going to try to just drive my car around the Explorer, but I think I like these better. And now that we got Mark V belts, these are going to be even faster. I just have to upgrade them all. And we should just be zipping around. But ultimately, these ramps are going to be used for the train, I think. I hope we can ride, ride, uh, ride the train and it's not just for freight, but I'm not quite sure yet. So we're heading south. Some of these, <laughs> some of these bends are a little bit too too uh, jagged, so you have to kind of get back on the... Okay, it's over that way. So we're going to probably overshoot a little bit here, but since I already have the highway built, we're going to go this way. And then cut left at some point here. I built all this off camera. It takes a long time, but it definitely makes it easier to get around. Okay, we're going to probably just start cutting over here. And I'm going to extend the highway. I'll skip ahead though, because this takes a little bit. It takes a little while. So, so here I am above the waterfalls. Uh, and the uranium, uranium's somewhere around here. It's pretty close. It seems like it's kind of below us, but a little bit to the right. So I'm going to just continue on here and probably maybe jump down. I have a feeling maybe it's under the waterfalls. So we'll check down there. Looks like there's a hard drive wreck up there. And we're going to have to take the, the old leap of faith here, I think. I might just jump down. It's a bit easier to see when you open your map with the Z key. Kind of where it is. But you don't know, you can, it doesn't tell which, what the depth is. Okay, screw it. I'm just going to jump down. There's been a lot of stuff kind of hidden be behind falls in the past, so... We're going to try... We're going to try finding under... Under the falls here. And it's a bit of a drop. <laughs> nice view, though. I've got the fog turned off, so... Now it looks like it's back this way, so I have a feeling it's either under the water or it's under... There's like a cave under the falls. So I'm just going to jump off the falls and see if I can check under there. Oh, here we go. See if I can build a platform as I fall. Oh, I'm going to run out of fuel. Oh. Just made it. Okay, good. Some rocks here. Maybe this will lead lead in to some kind of cave. I don't want to do my explosives too close, though. I might blow myself off the cliff here. Okay. Let's use our handy Danny detonator. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, 
looks like one of those uh, artifact things. But no entrance right there. But we'll grab this. At some point, these are going to actually do something. So like uh, 15 minutes later, uh, I finally find the way in. It's a little bit confusing. These falls here, when I first tried to go through them, I hit an invisible wall. So I tried to blow up that invisible wall. It didn't do anything. So then I just kind of kind of crept around. And if you just kind of wiggle your way through, you'll eventually get in there. You can see where I am and where the uranium is showing up. It's kind of... There must be a massive cave here. So yeah, you hit this wall. It's very confusing. Can't go past it. But if you head to the right, you can kind of sneak through. There must be a, a opening in the invisible wall. I'm gonna chop down some of these mushroom trees just to get some mycelium. Okay, let's take a little look inside this cave here. Get my rifle out, just in case it's infested with bad spiders. Okay, this thing looks like it's going to be pretty big. Got some ore there. These caves are always a little bit spooky. Lots of uh, mushrooms in here. Bacon. And some mycelia all over the place. I wonder if this stuff grows back. I don't think it does, but... I need that stuff to make filters. I'm going to save here, just in case. I'm a little bit paranoid that we'll get killed in the cave. Okay, here we go. Got our rifle, got lots of ammo. You can see we're a little way into the cave here. Stock up on those uh, delicious bacon mushrooms while we're in here. Smell that uranium from here. It's gotta be up ahead. I think we're in the right cave this time. Oh, more waterfall ahead. I think that's the waterfall that I was at earlier. Gotta get these mushrooms though. They're good food, they heal pretty well. When the game auto saves, it gets pretty uh, laggy. Okay, I think it might be straight ahead there. Yeah, yeah, I see it glowing green. Now before this update, it was black. It looked like a black patch of ore. But now it's green, glowing green. I think technically it's yellow, but this is a game after all. Now, this cave is pretty big. I do want to explore it a little bit more, but I'm going to do that at another time. And I'll skip ahead here just to... Okay, this is definitely the way we tried to get in because I can see my ramp over there. But we got an invisible wall there, so we can't go through. Look at this cave. It's so cool. I'm going to skip ahead. I'll explore the rest of the cave another episode. I think it's really huge. It just keeps on going and going. So so I put a workbench down here so I can make some portable miners. 
Uh, and I end up putting a Mark II Miner down. Um, I don't have any power in here. I was thinking of powering it with fuel. But uh, it's kind of I was just kind of testing things out. I also wanted to see how radioactive it was and how well the suit worked. So I do put this down and then I'll probably have to bring a power line in here to actually power it or somehow bootstrap it so we can get the uranium production working. And I, oh, here we go where I'm going to test. I did a save and then I'm going to test how bad this stuff hurts you. And it hurts pretty bad so you just, I just delete it so it doesn't hurt me anymore. Um, heal back up. I do try the hazmat suit out. But I kind of went and read a little bit about what I was going to need to actually get this all set up. And here I skipped ahead. I'm going to try to rough out what I need here. So you, the the raw uh, uranium that you get, you have to turn into like uh, encased uranium. And I think that just requires the raw ore plus concrete. So we'll put it into an assembler. We'll load it up here. Let's pick the recipe first. There we go. Ran uranium cells. Basically just like dipping it in concrete, I guess. And then I'll get a storage container here that I'll eventually fill up with concrete. I probably won't need the storage container, but just as a buffer kind of. And I'll chuck some of the concrete I have on me right now. Hook that up. This isn't going to be functional, but it's... I just want to kind of test things out. Okay, there goes the concrete. And I'm going to need to bring a power line in here from the base. It's going to be a very long power line, uh, but we'll do that an at another time. Or I could bring a bunch of fuel over, and but that's not a permanent solution, so... Let's clear things up here. Build some foundations. Make a little bit of room. So after the fuel um, uranium cells, we also need a whole bunch of other stuff to actually get the fuel rods. And we don't have all the materials we need to build those on site. So I'll have to bring... I'll probably have to either bring the materials in by truck or by conveyor belt. Or we could ship the uranium out. Oh, this thing's in the way. I'll have to get it out of the way here. Yeah, I could ship the uranium closer to the base and then build everything I need and put the nuclear reactors over there. Or I could uh, ship the materials in I need to process the uranium here and then do all the power generation here. I'm not quite sure which, which I'm going to do yet. I'll probably do the making of the ur uranium fuel rods here. Either way, I need to set up some transport and power from the base to here, which is going to take a long time. Kind of tedious stuff. I'll do off camera and I'll probably do it. Not next episode, because next episode I'm going to do the aluminum production stuff. But the episode after that, I will try to get the nuclear reactor going here. So out of the assembler, we're going to need to do a manufacturer to actually build the nuclear fuel rods here. So let's try to make a place for that. These things are honking big. Giant machine. So cool, though. There, that should be, should be a good place right there, maybe. Kind of clean things up here a little bit, make it a little bit more space. Oh, I gotta get rid of that ramp. Ah, uh, there's this cool tool now. Um, I'll try to link to, link it in the description or a comment, but it lets you import your save file and it kind of generates a map for you. Super cool. It also has uh, like a map of the game and where all the resources are. I try not to spoil myself too much though. Okay, what do we need here? We need 
encased industrial beams. So we'll have to either import those or make them on site. But they themselves require a bunch of different things. So we'll probably have to import them here on a conveyor belt or a truck. I prefer conveyor belts because they're getting really fast now and there's even faster ones coming out. And eventually trains, we might be able to use trains in the future. So I'll set up two storage containers here. I'll manually get the ingredients for these two. In case industrial beam I already have, the other one I'm going to have to make. I'll probably do that, like I said, not next episode, but the episode after. Maybe just bring them over here manually and then we'll get some nuclear fuel rods going so we can get that reactor going. I think the burn time for one fuel rod is five minutes, so it lasts quite a while. But I think the developers might be trolling us a bit because the, uh, the reactor gives off nuclear waste and then we have to do something with that waste. I mean, we could store it in a container, but eventually the container will get full and we'll have to store it in more containers. They haven't given us a way to actually get rid of the waste, so I don't even need the power now. I just want to play with the technology. Let's grab these beams here. More bacon. Can't have too much bacon. So yeah, is nuclear power going to be a good thing if there's no way to get rid of the waste? Uh, I don't know. But yeah, next episode, um, aluminum production setup. Not that I really need much of it yet, but we'll probably need it eventually. And episode after that, I want to get, I want to get the reactor online. We're gonna have some waste. We probably have no way to get rid of it, but it should be fun to play with. But I think I'm gonna wrap things up here because we're gonna have to build a lot of stuff off camera get this thing rolling so as always uh thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time